This might be the world's fastest and most compact home on wheels. Welcome to my latest invention, the fully livable solar powered sports camper car. Okay, this is the main entrance into the cabin. The first thing we see is a kitchen. This is fully operational. We have a kitchen counter mounted on top of a two drawer cabinet and the cabinet is mounted on top of hardwood flooring. Let me show you what's in the back. Fresh water comes out of the five gallon tank into this rechargeable water faucet. And by a press of a button, I can wash my hands and I can also fill up my water kettle and cook. Now the water goes into a 10 inch sink and then from the sink, the water is directed into a one gallon tank that can be easily emptied out. Instead of using propane, I decided to go with an electric ceramic cooker. This device requires 1000 watts of power and it draws 120 volts of electricity. It's actually powered by my electrical solar system, which I'll show you at the end. And to make this place a little bit nicer, I decided to put this clock. It has Bluetooth, it can connect to my phone as a speaker, and it also has these cool lights that can be very helpful at night. And on the side, we have this plant right here. Going back a little bit to this area, I just want to show you. Over here, I'm keeping my one gallon portable urinal. So I can go number ones, but for number twos and showers, I just use my gym membership. Over here in the back, there's additional storage. I'm keeping some cleaning products. In order for the cabinet doors not to stick out while I'm driving, I decided to put some childproof safety locks. And just like that, I can just open my drawer. And actually for the top one, I decided to put two types. And there we go. As you can see, I have some utensils and I have stuff to make energy drinks. And this is my dish soap and sponges. Let's check the other drawer. So this is my plate. I have things to make coffee. I have cups right here, coffee filters, disposable plates, cooking pot. And this is my water kettle. And this is what I use to make coffee. I just put this on top of a cup, put a filter and then add my grounds and pour hot water and that's it. Since I don't have a fridge in my car yet, most of the things that I'm cooking are easy things such as like warming up soup, canned soup, and this is a like mac and cheese, anything dry, even ramen noodles. But you know what? I could always just go to the grocery store and get some fresh meat, for example, and cook. I actually cooked a steak a couple of weeks back in my other SUV camper. And if you want to see the full tour of that camper car, you can watch it right after this one. This seat that I'm in right now is basically the living room of this camper. Because I'm close to the kitchen, I can do my cooking. I'm close to the bed, so I can just go ahead and maneuver my way into the bed. And obviously, I'm close to the exit door. As you can see, I removed the back piece of the rear seats and I replaced it with a self-crafted maple wood panel. This panel acts as back support for this seat and also it has a secret compartment for storage and right now I'm hiding my electric heating blanket in there. In this seat, I can just relax, lay back on my phone and if I want to use my laptop, I can just put it in my lap, connect the Wi-Fi to my phone's hotspot and then I'm good to go. For interior lighting, I'm using rechargeable magnetic LED bars. These things are so convenient because I don't have to run wires anywhere and the charge lasts a few days, which is pretty good. And they're turned on by a press of a button. And to charge them, all I do is just take them out and just plug a charging cable into the USB-C coming from the portable power station. The power station we're getting close to. And once I'm done, I can just stick it back. Okay, now we have the bed. The bed is six feet long and 30 inches wide. And for reference, I'm six feet tall and 175 pounds. The mattress is two inch mattress covered with a one inch mattress topper. This is very thin, I know, but because the head goes on this side and then the legs go into the trunk, I had to sacrifice and make sure that the clearance I have at the port is wide enough. All the wood that you see here is three quarter inch maple plywood, which is very strong, by the way. I painted the side edges of the bed black because I wanted to match the kitchen cabinet and keep a balanced color theme. The bed has support on the front portion with a self-crafted base and of course support in the rear trunk bed. I forgot to mention there's snacks underneath my bed. If I just go like this. Now let me convert this camper into sleep mode and show you how I actually get into the bed.
let's pretend it's time to sleep. Obviously, I would have something more comfortable than jeans, but essentially, I would go like this. And there we go. My legs are fully extended straight into the trunk. Both of my arms have support. I can just relax like this. Even though the mattress is thin, I'm not feeling the wood platform underneath. I prefer to sleep on my belly. So let me show you how that looks like. You see, like I have room. It was important to move the driver's seat so I can have some room here maneuvering. All right, let me show you how I get out. There we go. This is the bed platform I was talking about. That's how the bed has support right there. And on the side, I'm keeping some storage. These are my Reflectex for the front side windows. So I like my privacy and that's why I tinted my windows with limo tint and 20% tint. The red window covers you see are just Reflectex from the hardware store. I cut them up myself and painted one side with rubber paint. The window covers in the rear are semi-permanent, meaning that they stay on the whole time. For the front side windows, I have to manually put the covers before I go to sleep. And let me tell you, once all these window covers are installed, you can't see a single thing from the outside. And that's perfect because I don't want people knowing that I live here. Now let me show you what's inside my trunk. So the bed is occupying most of the space on the one side. I keep my minimalistic clothing in small compartments on the other side. We have some LED lights running from the bed, from the front of the bed all the way to the back of the bed. And at nighttime it looks cool. And this is my gym bag. This is what I take into the gym so I can shower and change clothes. So this bag is very important as well. Socks here, underwear, um, sleeves, and then pants. Over there I have my drone. Over here I keep some accessories, electronics. That's about it, you know? Now, all the electronics and rechargeable devices in my camper are powered by this portable power station. This is the River 2 Max from EcoFlow. It has 43 amp lithium iron phosphate battery, a built-in 500 to 1000 watt power inverter, and this allows me to plug in devices that require AC socket, like my ceramic cooker, my heating blanket, and even my laptop. This River 2 Max is connected to two 100 watt EcoFlow brand solar panels, giving me a total of 200 watts. And the solar panels are hard mounted onto the roof using self tapping screws. If you're interested in this solar system, I made dedicated videos on my channel explaining how I set them up and use them. As you can see, my input is 11 watts right now, but that's expected because you know it is almost sunset right now now let's talk about the build it took me 10 working days to convert this car from stock into what it is right now and the total cost for conversion was fifteen hundred dollars if you're interested in seeing how i did this the entire build series is on my youtube right now there's part one and two and then the two electrical videos after that why did I choose to convert such a small car into a camper i wanted to prove something i wanted to prove that any car can be converted into a living space. Previously, I lived in a big Sprinter van. Most recently, I've been living in an SUV. With a smaller car, you lose some benefits like headroom or being able to stand up. But there's also pros to having a small car. With a small car, it's easier to stealth camp. It's easier to find parking spots. And the conversion cost is so much lower. Just to give you a reference, my old Sprinter van cost me $8,000 to convert into a camper. My SUV cost me about $5,000 to convert into a camper. And obviously, you're seeing a trend, right? And just to paint the picture a little bit better, my old 170 wheelbase Sprinter van had 530 cubic feet of space inside. This car only has 100 cubic feet. So the space inside of a Sprinter is five times bigger than this. So there's way less space to be worked on. And the main reason I'm doing this is because rent prices are only getting higher and they're the main cost of living right now. And that's why two years ago, I decided to live in vehicles versus paying that monthly rent. Living in cars is a completely different lifestyle. Everything about your daily routine is gonna change. And since I enjoy the outdoors and traveling so much, this lifestyle fits me. Since then, I've been exposed to so much adventure, a lot of travels, and that's also because I'm not grounded to a zip code. My home is wherever I go. 
If you're new here, welcome. My name is Arslan and I post content about living in vehicles. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Also leave a comment and let me know what you think of this camper.